Hello everyone, welcome. So today we're going to do a bit of a talking head video. I want to talk about ETA Prime's Steam Proton versus Windows on a Ryzen 5700G gaming machine video. Now, um, obviously you guys know that Steam Deck, uh, it will come with Steam OS and it's going to have this Proton compatibility layer uh, so that you can play all of your Windows games on Steam OS. And uh, for me personally, I was happy to run in SteamOS with Proton. I figured maybe it would be about 5 to 10 percent performance hits, um, but I would trade that for the SteamOS uh, operating system and how it would be uh, easier to use on a handheld. And also, there may be other features that we don't know about yet um, that come with uh, SteamOS that is more suited for a handheld than Windows, for example. Um, so, I, I was probably going to use SteamOS. Um, so I was curious about this video because I wanted to know how much of a performance hit there was going to be between Steam Proton uh, and Windows. Uh, so the, I think the results here are really surprising. So ETA Prime, he tested five games. The system is a 5700G, which is uh, eight Vega units. Now we know on the Steam Deck it has eight RDNA2 units. Now that's roughly about 20% difference, but ETA Prime, he has overclocked this 5700G um, from 2000 MHz to 2300 megahertz. So I think that is close to like maybe 10-15%. So I think um, it's going to be close to whatever you're going to get on Steam Deck. Now ETA Prime, he tested five games, Injustice 2, The Witcher 3, Fallout 4, Project Cars 2 and Skyrim. Now four of those games actually play better on Windows and one of them, The Witcher 3, plays better on Steam Proton. Now I think um, with Injustice 2 the performance hit is really big so on Windows it was about 58 FPS and on Steam Proton it was 38 FPS so a huge difference of about 20 FPS there and so that's definitely a game that you want to be playing on Windows. Uh, the other three games Fallout 4, Project Cars 2 and Skyrim which played better on Windows they, uh, it wasn't by that much. I think it was about five to ten percent uh, between them. Um, so uh, I guess those are okay, but there's still a lead there for Windows. And I think for something like Project Cars 2, um, you're still playing at low settings. So if you can get that extra five ten percent and you're able to uh, boost up your graphics settings a little bit more, I think that would be worth it um, to play that type of game in Windows instead of uh, Steam OS, especially if you play those games for long periods of time. Um, so with even though it's only a very short list of games, I think this leads to the conclusion that uh, people are going to have to test out the games themselves uh, or at least uh, talk online and find out on forums which games run better on Steam OS and which games run better on Windows. Now, the other thing was that a Japanese developer, they've been able to test that um, Windows 11 is bootable off an SD card on a Steam Deck. So they already have their hands on a Steam Deck. Um, so that pretty much confirms the fact that you're able to boot other operating systems on the Steam Deck. And that's great because then you can install whatever you want on it and it's effectively like a PC. So I think this is really exciting news because this Steam Deck is very much like a PC except it just doesn't have a keyboard or a mouse uh, or monitor but you could plug all of those things in if you really wanted to. Uh, but the hardware is there and you could turn this into a PC if you really wanted to. Um, and you know with gamers over the last couple of years I've just felt like um, the prices have just been going up and up and up and the value uh, has just uh, gone away and there's a lot of value in the Steam Deck because essentially Valve is using the Steam Store to subsidize this hardware um, from its software sales um, that it's hoping to get once you get the Steam Deck. Uh, and that's kind of something that uh, Sony and Microsoft do with their consoles. They use the hardware, they give away the hardware and then hope that you buy a lot of software from them and Steam is kind of doing the same thing and they're going to do this with the Steam Deck. 
Um, and we've seen like with the A and Neo and the GPT Win, uh, well, they can't really do that because they don't have a store there. So they have to charge higher prices, uh, sometimes eight hundred, nine hundred thousand dollars for their hardware. But now Steam can do it, and I think this is great for consumers who've been waiting for something uh, with a bit more value uh, than paying for those astronomical prices uh, of PC gaming recently. Now, one final thing I do want to say is that. Uh, if the Steam Deck does well, I hope Valve will think about doing something similar for uh, PCs as well and maybe have a Steam PC. Now, not the same thing as a Steam machine, but I hope that um, Steam, they can um, make some affordable PC hardware. Uh, that is kind of in line with like a console. Now a lot of people might not like that because they want to have customizable PCs and there's still room for all of those customizable PCs. But I think there's a certain segment of the audience who don't really want to pay high prices uh, or too high. Uh, they want to be paying like console prices. Um, so they want to get a PC that is kind of like a PS5 type of performance for like about $500 and not have to pay like $1,500 for it. Um, so maybe Steam can do that uh, or maybe Valve can do that with a Steam PC. Uh, maybe put say like a 3060 into a uh, PC. Uh, maybe it is an APU of some sort, but m maybe if they can do that because uh, with the Steam Deck, they can also do that with the Steam PC. Okay, so that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, uh, make sure to click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Uh, we have a lot of other Steam Deck videos on the channel, so go and check those Steam Deck uh, videos out, and I'll see you guys in the next one.